Sorry. Little burp. That's okay. Salsa burp. <laughs> Speaking of salsa burps, you know what I could use right now? Mm. Wait. <laughs> you skipped it. Hey, Victoria. Hey, Chelsea. You know what I could use right now? I have no idea. What could you use? Uh, a Breath of Fresh movie. Yay. Yay. Uh, yeah. Cool. Take my salsa burp. Oh, hang on. Check this shit out. What? <gasps> Hell yeah. Wow, that's some artsy <laughs> shit. Yeah, we did it. Classy. Um, welcome to a Breath of Fresh movie. Yay. Hey, good night. <laughs> <laughs> that's the show. This is a podcast where me, Victoria Harley, and me, Chelsea Pope, we watch a movie mm-hmm. and then we talk about it. Yeah. Oh, it's in a movie that neither one of us has ever seen. Yeah, this that's is, an important detail. It's just, it's a thing. You might have seen this these movies and maybe you were listening because you just want to hear if we agree or disagree yep. or maybe you haven't seen the movie which then it's cool to listen to what we say except for when we spoil stuff sometimes like there are spoilers sometimes yeah that that's a good thing to mention up top is uh we don't necessarily go to every plot detail but we, we are but, gonna spoil stuff but we do spoil stuff so but it is well, like well, um, you know i'm just sucking the energy out of everything no <laughs> you're fine i it's me i'm sitting here no, just you're being a little you're great a little lump i also feel like a lump sometimes but like you know like a lump of sugar you mm-hmm. know? like i'll dissolve eventually yum oh well that's really positive oh <laughs> uh, well i'll dissolve any eventually. and then you, I, you won't even know i was there you know at least at the end of the day aren't we just sugar cubes we're, we're, we're all gonna we're all biodegradable we're all point, gonna dissolve eventually comes into the coffee and we become part of the higher being Oh my god, this is beautiful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It has nothing to do with the movie. Not movie. at all. <laughs> that we were watching. Not at all. Today's episode is about the 1972 black comedy, epic farce, anarchical satire, the ruling class. What a movie. I feel like there should have been trumpets. Yeah. I don't have that sound on the board yet. Uh, if you haven't seen this film before, it stars Peter O'Toole and mm-hmm. stars is truly the right word Mm -hmm. um it's about a paranoid schizophrenic british nobleman played by o'toole who inherits a peerage which that's a fancy word for a noble title yeah rank uh that's basically it more specifically the guy suffers from a delusion in that he believes he's god yeah um so that's something yeah he's he thinks he's god and all of the other immediate family or or support in in loosely using that term are um Mm -hmm. very concerned about his sanity in relation to the fate of the estate yes and so um especially because he's the one who it's because the movie starts out his dad dies so then it's the dad right or it's the grandfather it was an uncle I oh think. shit well okay. you know what i don't remember the point is the, the point is he, uh sir, sir sir jack is the heir apparent of ev- of the whole enchilada mm-hmm. and they're worried he's gonna just kind of desecrate it they're worried yeah. they're not gonna get theirs they're worried for a number of reasons and so they're mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. they are um so different people have different interests in this but everybody is is it, there's a mix of people trying to either cure him or trying to get the inheritance away from him yeah or to try to get a new heir uh it sounds a lot know. like the little foxes it's a lot like the little fox. wow that was actually i felt like there were some parallels definitely there, there's like a there's like a double feature somewhere yeah. i i don't i could not well, do a double feature of those two no movies. god no no me neither uh that would be i mean you need an intermission and a pizza you know um, yeah that's a but that's one a other thing they have in common though just to continue that thread yeah is that, like the little foxes this was adapted from a play by peter barnes mm-hmm. and he was the one who adapted it into a screenplay so again we have the playwright making the the film adaptation so i i also think like right the title of this movie it automatically should ring a bell that like okay we're talking about class you know i think right. that like right in america we pretend doesn't exist but it does mm-hmm. and in britain it very much exists and no one you know pretends it doesn't right <laughs> um everything you're seeing <laughs> everything that's outrageous everything that's crazy everything that seems like what the fuck mm-hmm. it's like yeah that's rich people 
Yeah, this is a very in-your-face satire. Ugh. Like, immediately, this is all about just, like... And a successful satire. Right. I think satire is hard, and this movie is pretty perfect right. at it. I think Sasha Baron Cohen is a great example of, of someone who's done the best satire yeah. and the most cringe, unpleasant yeah. satire. And then there is also satire that gets misinterpreted as as true right or as like like a modus operandi type thing like yeah. american psycho mm. is it a successful satire yeah or is it something that that people project or mm-hmm. sort of emulate or try to model off of yeah missing the point like is... we kind of talked about euphoria like that being yeah. being in that same way of like people project or like uh mm-hmm. wanting to emulate instead of like taking criticism or like seeing the criticism yeah or... just because we're depicting something doesn't mean we're endorsing it Right. right like this film I is stuck in euphoria for no reason into that that didn't totally fit but it's, it's fine. fine it's fine it's fine. We're here. it's fine i mean nowadays like the rule you know in britain at this time the ruling class i mean we're talking about like it's like end of the 60s early 70s and i i know this from eddie izzard he, who grew up at that time he talks about how like in britain there was this attitude of like oh no more empire <laughs> like oh no more so i think there's like this this um intensity of these these estated landed gentry you know, mm-hmm. have this really historical hierarchical power. You really don't want to give it up. And it's increasingly like being eroded. Yeah. So I think like his relatives aren't just like rich and mean for mean's sake. I mean, they kind of are because, again, satire. But right. it's like there's like a larger context, you know, going oh, on. Oh, no, they're, tra- they're really trying to preserve their, their position, life. their, their yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. There's their motivations life. There's for this, yeah. The, the legacy as it, as it starts, to, as you really see, especially uh, at the end and the, yeah. that final, and that court of masters, oh my God. Or court of lords. The, and the it's house of lords. House like, of lords. And they're all skeletons. That was amazing. Yeah, that was just that all was of great. it was There very... were so many moments. I mean, what were your first impressions of this movie? Like when you finished or you were in the middle of it? Like, I mean, sure. You... I had a couple moments I know where I was like, what the fuck? Um, I overall really, really liked it. I think, oh, you should know the runtime for this movie is 155-ish minutes. Um, so it's a haul. That is... And this, and and, and I, I, I hate to say it, but I definitely do think that this needed to. That there, there was room for this to get trimmed, in my opinion. And I say there this, other- and there were very interested. Like I was engaged the whole time. Yeah. No, I actually there were a couple instances there, where it loses me. There are a bunch of people who agree with you. you okay. Know, quite honestly, and yeah. It's worth mentioning too that um, I think we saw the complete cut. Uh, but when it was released in America, they did do some editing. I think it was like six minutes. It, was like, it wasn't very... that much. Yeah. yeah. There was though a, a, a motion at one point, like some distributor wanted to cut a lot more down. Yeah. And I think the producer of this film, I read this, I couldn't confirm it, like literally punched the guy and, uh-huh. and bought back the film so that they wouldn't cut it apart. Interesting. I mean, I don't think it was a terrible instinct, you know? Sure. But because this is one of those movies that's anarchical, um, yeah. I mean, I think it's blending genres, kind of like right. what we were talking about with Promising Young Woman, and how sometimes that confuses people and it makes people upset and kind of like, uh, but they're now they're singing. Yeah, I, I, I didn't know which, this was which I, that that was one of the many things I found absolutely delightful is that the singing was often unprompted. Yep. It was just completely accepted into the reality of oh of yeah the way they joined everything. in with him and and yeah, yeah and I love that in spite of him being crazy it's like no but actually there is this level of of fantastic there's a fantastical absurdism of the world they're in inherently from that yeah um, and no their whole world is absurd and and it's also short little ditties too like yeah. it's all just these quick things and they make sense they serve. But they're also like I don't you know in a way it almost kind of reminded me of Annette, mm. but I, I liked this more because it does feel like a straight so far satire normal kind of movie type thing. <laughs> normal, normal. <laughs> I say this very loosely, but then those musical things would start. But the musical numbers all fit with what was happening. Yeah, it, you know it. It drove the story. Like you know he sings with the guy because he the 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 guy the doctor that comes that mm. they're trying to have him be deemed insane and it's like I know you from the Eaton and they oh, do that, that other was, Eaton rowboat thing. That was amazing. I absolutely love that. And also again classic ruling class move. Yeah. Like oh yeah. no I got the oh, doc I know. in my he, pocket. Yeah, we go this back. Guy's, yeah. We both went to the same college. Oh I know he's a buddy of mine. Yeah. A buddy of mine from college. Alumni is very important. Alumni yeah. is very 
very important. Gotta, those connections, man. That was perfect. The music for me was a little like I think I was more like what? Like, it's very silly. It's music very too. It's, it's very like they'll, they'll go into very yeah. vaudevillian style dancing no, and, and totally. cane work and stuff, and it's um, jarring and silly. Yeah, and like there was one line that was like explain before you explode. Yes, <laughs> I there were a lot of really f- oh, there's good. There's so lines. many good lines. Like there's, I, I don't there's have two really funny moments especially with yeah. Peter O'Toole. I want to make sure we talk. That, oh yeah, that yeah. I want to spoil deliberately, no, okay. which I don't want to spoil. It took a minute to get it but the there's like a grammar to the film like mm. to the when we know we're in his perception and his mind and yeah. when we're outside of it right. receiving him and i just thought it, it worked really well like yes. they they and that's like what i mean but this film being weird it's like but it's also it's it's this wonderfully weird thing there's that moment where they transition out of the house directly into the alley yeah it's just like it's wild and it, there's no borders to anything and there are no rules seemingly right to anything that's going on and it's kind of like you you never at any time know what's gonna happen yeah no it can it can lead to a very absurd i mean i, mm-hmm. I love the left hand turns of this movie so much yeah. and um that wig was pretty bad like I'm so fun though. It was fun. I thought it was so fun. You liked and awful. it, okay? I mean, I'm gonna whole, say. I mean, I know that they painted him up to look more pale and like, and he, they definitely were doing a lot of stuff with oh, his yeah. face. He has I mean, a ton of makeup on, like ton of the entire movie, right? So I mean, there's a lot of artifice happening, yeah. And like, and there's something really great about him being this Jesus figure. He's got the long hair and he's in the white suit with the carnation. Like, like that could easily be a really deep cut Halloween costume. I love you know? that. Yeah, like, absolutely. Um, I would, I would so appreciate that now if yeah, I saw that. Wow. It, but it was, it'd be such a yeah. And Peter O'Toole just as a like a performer, you know, he's this great profile. Like his his face, you know, he looks mm-hmm. really right. But so something about when he's dead on staring mm-hmm. at you, that's. He's a little alarming. Like he's got a really yeah. He's got a kind of scary face head right? on, but then by the on the side, and it's like I feel like it's his eye shape and the spacing of them. Yeah, there's something very romantic. Yeah, but also a bit, um, but unsa- to the point where it's unsettling. Yeah, like I mean, a, and, like, and there were a lot of direct to camera addresses. In this. Yes, and th- that was also a really fun way to play with like people's perception. Like when he has that. I mean, what an yeah. entrance! What an entrance! Right. Like they get everybody's reaction shot before I love he that. walks. I mean, it was just delightful. They do a lot of very blatant playful. camera. The camera is very playful in this. Yes. And it moves very loosely and it kind of will yeah. just 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 kind of sloppily zoom in on somebody like cutting flowers and zoom uh-huh. out and then zoom in on this absolutely the, you know particular handiwork or whatever, you know. Yeah. It's just but it's 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 great. It's a very broad brush stroke movie just from start to finish, which ultimately I feel just hurts because of the runtime, but everything else about it makes it fun the, yeah the the oh it's a fun movie like the, it's funny it's fun it's funny i will say yeah like that if i were trimming stuff it would be there's a lot of banter amongst the little foxes of a crew you know let's i want to call them just yeah. for shorthand no, let, let's do it the little foxes i feel like crew. the little foxes crew i think some of that banter um, and they, to to their credit, they were delivering it w- fast, but mm-hmm. some of it I feel like was just not that necessary of comedy. Like I think you're right for what the, all the discussion of what was happening. Yeah. Um, but it, I think that was an opportunity where maybe wordplay was supposed to be a bit. There's so much wordplay, you know, kind of like in in Tom Stoppard style, where it's like what is a word? A little, I'm doing a pun. Now it's in a game. Yeah. I'm aware. Are you like? No, exactly. There's something about him thinking he's God that gives him this incredible ability. Or his insanity does it, you know, but he he is drawing references from right. s- just globally and just seemingly all over. Like, I mean, even when they explain, it's like, well, who how did you learn this about yeah. yourself? And he's like, oh, the voices of St. Francis, Socrates, General Gordon and Timothy O'Leary came to me, you know, and it's <laughs> yeah. like, yeah. OK, we're covering a lot of great. He's a lot of ground here. He's a, he's a what a well-educated man that, yes. that has gone mad. Yeah. And, you know, I think. I was talking to my, I saw my mom this morning for breakfast because it's President's Day and I was off mm. work. But I was talking, I'm like, did you ever see the ruling class? You know, she's like, yeah, I mean, a long time ago, I barely remember it. As I was talking about it with her, I think what I realized was like, what's the fastest way I can explain this movie? And I'm like, insanity in a person who has no means, it's like a curse. Yeah. But insanity in a wealthy person is just tolerated as eccentricity. Right. And the tremendous amount of privilege he has just by even being in that that wonderfully palatial hospital right. that he was in, the psychiatrist, the German psychiatrist, like he has all those. He has all the amenities. and He has and, everything. Yeah. And more. 
the way they all live is absurd. The way they right. all live is an insane, like they live like insane people. Yeah, they're all crazy. It's just he's the only one that is a threat to their life. Yeah, so they have to deal with it. Yeah. And they, yeah, there's, okay, there's a lot of different ways this is handled. But before we get into some of those plots, I have to know best supporting player. Like Peter O'Toole's obviously like the anchor, but there were a lot of great other characters. There were a lot of great other characters. I'm just going to um, answer myself. Yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Tucker. Tucker. Yeah. The servant. Yeah. Like the, who at the beginning, when this peerage gets handed to uh, Jack, Peter O'Toole's character, mm-hmm. the, about 30,000 pounds, which I didn't do the calculation for inflation, but it's a lot of money now. Right. Uh, is is awarded to basically his personal valet or servant that's been with the house the whole time named Tucker. Right. Um, and we saw him early on. I mean, this film begins, not it's not the first scene, but it begins with this wealthy aristocrat um, and his servant pre- preparing a room for him to basically do like autoerotic as- asphyxiation. Right. Mm-hmm. And it's very routine. The servant like puts the ladder up like it, like th- they've done this before, right. you know, like this is not the first time. And, and there was something about Tucker who he actually was kind of the only one who cared about Jack. You know, he was like looking out for him. He had like a relationship with this family. Like he's yeah. the most. He's, he hated the rich too. I mean, that helped. Yeah, right? that's like, and that play and it plays a big part, like in and how the story unfolds yeah. actually. But they all kind of are wondering why hasn't he quit? Like mm-hmm. he's got all this money. Why would he still work here? You know, right? Um, yeah. So it's an interesting, and he even kind of beats himself up about that. He's like, "What am I still doing here?" You know. I guess I just. And then, of course, the irony of that at the yeah. you know at the end, spo- right. spoilers, right? Right. I mean, he's finally doing something with them, <laughs> and then they stop him. And oh, it's just I the know most, the most guilty he could look in that I, moment because uh, yeah. uh, like because oh. he's all dressed up to go on this vacation to, to Paris. Yeah. The girls say we oui, we. Oui. Yeah, the girls say we oui, we. Oui. <laughs> some good. Was, there's some good lines there. It's he was true. So it's ready true. To kick off his heels. No, it did look super guilty. That was a great moment. Yeah, but um, the, the humor of that too, where he just he has no idea even that he's in this moment of being yeah. accused of murder God. and then of course too when it comes out of his like political affiliation and stuff too it's not yeah. even a check for evidence or anything so no yeah. it's just yeah, yeah just but if we, we want to first of all too like wanted i wanted to say re- in regards to those two funny moments in that and there were many more oh, many, and there's but- many more even just captivating kind of scary moments you know he gets really he gets like scary crazy a couple of times you know he really but like does. this movie i understand its l- length but then i keep i keep going back to it just because the main point i want to just make is that like i would have been more into the length of this movie with just watching him Mm -hmm. the whole time Mm. but there were just certain breaks that i did that i was yeah i didn't vibe with as much i guess or just it was a little i don't know it was necessary there were a lot of phases like i think it took a long time just to meet him it took some time time to 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 establish it it to make it an entrance yeah and and then it took some time for you know him to just be insane and them's plotting and scheming and then getting the doctor and then you know basically the whole plan is okay he's crazy so let's marry him off and we'll have them produce a son yeah produce (laughs) you know we'll have well she'll she'll have an heir yeah and And then we'll declare him insane right and have him carted off that way like everything stays in the family everything's good everything's fine right in, in their eyes and i think i did empathize with him even though he's peter to let no time rests on like a preacher trope Right. He doesn't like he doesn't go into these like very predictable places of like people who speak to God. He's just like an intense narcissist. Right. And in some ways, he never really stops believing that he's God. Like they cure him. No, he just like like, I love his scene when he's basically describing how he's adjusted to society. Yeah. No, I'm I know. And it's 1888, right? Yeah. (laughs) And then like. I loved that. I loved the way that that devolved yeah. in a sense and the idea that he's been quote unquote cured, but of he's not, he's, but like, he's not only not cured, he's become an even more violent yeah, persona exactly. because he's accepted the name Jack, but applied yeah. it with a different character, Jack a the different kid, Jack yeah. the Ripper. Yeah. And so now, and I mean, in a way he yeah. still thinks he's God because Jack the Ripper, I mean, I don't know about all his motivations, but there was, they, they brought it up in the movie how like, 
killing prostitutes or sex workers, you know, because it was seen as this like immoral thing. Right. Like, so he's now in this like really puritanical kind of mode and he's in right. this black, you know, and and he cuts his hair, which I was kind of ready for. I'm like, yeah. When is this wig going to go away? I'm no, sorry. It was a really funny wig. <laughs> but he was like, he had like uh, David Bowie vibes a little bit with that, yeah. that hair. I yeah, like um, I just forget like Peter O'Toole. I think being, that with the makeup and his and his eye shape, he does have a very that that. There was something there. There's alien a there's a on. yeah yeah yeah, like not a dead ring or anything. Just like they could have little Ziggy star stuff. You know, it was about that time. Yeah. You know? Um, I don't know something about that hair color. I mean, there are a lot of moments again that made me laugh, but I laughed the hardest at these just these quick things that he would say, like he when um. He's being asked when 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 did you d- come to discover that you believed you were God? He's like, oh, you know, I've been praying to myself, or I was, I've been praying to God, and I realized I was talking to myself. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> Therefore, I'm God. <laughs> he doesn't say, but he no, that it. Anyway, was basically it. That was basically it. It's like oh, I realized I was talking to myself, <laughs> and then um, when he's looking at the ink blots, the Rorschach, yeah. <laughs> and every single one, he's like, God. I, I see God. I see the work of God. Mm-hmm. Well, if it, what would you see other than God? <laughs> yeah. And then there's a there's a moment of like real consideration. An ink blot. <laughs> just <laughs> it's so good. No, and I mean that's like a thing you hear about people who so have been simple. who go to like a, a a psychiatric hospital. It's like people figure out how to give the answers they need. Right, yeah. To get out. Right. So you can just get out. I mean, that was in Women on the Verge of Nurse Breakdown. Remember? Right. Like, she was like, oh, I, I was never not insane. I just decided I wanted to get out. And yeah, like, no, there's performance. It's all just a performance yeah, of sanity totally. or what is what are the accepted norms of mm-hmm. the insanity of the world that they're navigating in because he's yeah. still crazy but he's he's an acceptable kind of crazy yeah, in their and, world now yeah and it's just there's something about yeah exactly he's, and and then yeah. you know as it spins out though that more insane version that becomes destructive right ends up destroying every life around him or yeah. they go crazy themselves it's like this transference that goes out you know it's it's funny when he was like thought he was god and he was kind of in his hippier vibe he was actually better with people. No, he was you know? less of a threat. And it was so it's so sad too when Grace is like, You were more loving. Yeah. It was just like yeah. yeah, he was extremely affectionate. He was extremely mm-hmm. in that character. He was a wild man, but Yeah, it was very know. wild, but he was also she liked it was it. nonviolent, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um <laughs> and then they basically didn't fix. They not only didn't fix him, but they just made him. They made him worse. worse. They made him a murderer. Him oh, and like that scene where they bring in the what was it the the electronic. Oh Messiah yeah, or the, that was a cool scene. It reminded me of Network or Network. Yeah, I, yeah it was very. Then no, has- I'm God. I really liked how they were so. Like the psychiatrist gets into it. Like the his the main guy who's mm-hmm. trying to cure him and or, or try to get him taken care of yeah, properly. Dr. Herder. Dr. Herder, right. And he even is getting up so caught up and upset that Jack keeps saying he's gone and then he's like, what? I, you know, he starts describing all this violent stuff and then the, like someone was like, Oh, it was where he put his excrement. This is, the world is where he put his excrement. And yeah, right. This I just like dump stared, all my mistakes. God looked at you, and, like, turned his back, and and he get, broke wind. <laughs> <laughs> so it's basically just the turned. He turned his back and broke wind. That's good. That's a good. Was line. really funny, and they still was such anger. Yeah, there's so many surprising things you don't expect to come out of Peter O'Toole's mouth. Right. Um, You're reminding me of another great moment um, when his Lady Claire, who I think is his aunt or I don't know, one of these scheming foxes. Right. um, She's like, okay, if you're gone, then show us your godhead. And then he like unzips his fly. Uh (laughs) Put that back up. That's great. I don't know. Dirty. No, I liked it. I liked liked that. He was just so off the off the rails. And all the the wealthy people, there's, you know, we've got Sir Charles, who's just sort of like that's his whole thing. Lady Claire, who's kind of sexy. Like she like seduces the doctor and she's kind of like she's got milfy vibes. She's got milfy vibes. For sure. Her Um, her wig, it was hard for me to get into the milfy vibes with her because her wig reminded me too much of the wig from Valley of the Dolls. Oh, wow. The one that gets like ripped off off of the lady's head it, <laughs> yeah she reminded me too of much that. of that okay. and i was that's why i didn't hey, find that her happens hot. she was treated like the, the costuming whatever yeah, like, yeah. but she didn't seem frumpy or no like, they sexless. made her into a betty davis little fox no she type. was she was 
I don't know. She stood out to me. I liked her a lot. She had she had um, style. She was fitting. She was fitting an archetype there. Yeah, and then they have their son Dinsdale. Oh my God, he reminded me of cousin Greg a bit from Succession, <laughs> does, yeah. like a little bit. Not 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 in the way they talk or anything, but just the sort of the general kind of impotence, cluelessness. Of, like yeah. he falls in the bush and he's all, "I'm caught on the brambles." Yeah, I'm caught on the brambles. <laughs> That's so dumb and random. Father. <laughs> oh my fucking god. That was a really f- Dinsdale. I mean that really name. Funny. Just the name Dinsdale. It makes me smile. So that sounds yeah, it sounds um, like dim wit, dim. Yeah, it's good. It's good. Dum dum. Um, so some details about the the film production. Um, well, first of all, I'll, let's just say it was there were some nominations. Um, Peter O'Toole was nominated for an Academy Award for Best Actor in a Leading Role, mm-hmm. a, a role he would be up for many times in his life mm-hmm. and not win. Uh, wow. He was given an honorary Oscar eventually, but he was always a groomsman. Never the groom. Right. In that year, he was up against Marlon Brando, Michael Caine, Laurence Olivier, and Paul Winfield. So I'm like, yeah, mm, come on, dude. Like, that's tough. That's a tough year. Well, what, what movies were those? Do you? I know? didn't write it down, that's but I okay. think Brando was probably the Godfather. Oh yeah. I had to guess. I'm not sure about Olivier and Kane. This movie's a really like big swing too yeah. for like that era of movies, the auteur stuff I coming mean, through. Yeah, so he's kind of. It's, and it, this is so yeah, just so theatrical and yeah, and and oh, so theatrical. Um, it was the yeah. official British entry at uh, Cannes in 1972. I'm right. gonna say Cannes, Cannes, uh, and I, it either won the Palme d'Or or it was nominated. I think it was just nominated. Mm-hmm. Just nominated. I get nominations. Um, it was also nominated for um, a Golden Globe for. <laughs> I laughed at this because this award doesn't exist anymore. Mm-hmm. Best English English language foreign film. I like that. That's really funny. Which started in 1957 and was discontinued by 1973. That's why you've never heard of it. Um, Right. But it's like, okay, so we're talking about what? Australia, England, Canada. Like, God, that's such a... I'm wondering, like, what the... I'm, I'm trying to understand if it is in relation to the fact that, like... Well, if they're not technically American made, it's harder for them to get on the radar. But then they're simultaneously not foreign... I don't know. It was like they were trying to say, English well, it's foreign, but there's no subtitles. Right. Like, I think that's like really what they were trying to say. And like, I think they wanted to raise the profile of certain movies, but it's like, right, but you're still sidelining all these other, you know, relegating all these other, well, it's not in English, so... Mm-hmm. you know it was a good it's I'm glad they discontinued it that was yeah weird. It's tough. i looked it up because i was like what the fuck yeah <laughs> is that a joke it's a weird <laughs> that's a weird subcategory English language foreign film okay i guess there's there are okay there's examples and there oh, are just a fun fact there are more non-native speakers of english in the world than native speakers mm-hmm. more people learn english as a second language than are like raised with it speaking it so that really who, yeah. What's right? Right. I don't know. But then we're the, we're the ones, the arbiters of taste. Yeah, I know. The taste makers. Some shame. Mm. Um, okay, I I got a little. I wasn't sure if this is true or not. I I read somewhere that O'Toole starred in the stage production of this uh, in 1969 and then held on to the rights. Um, mm. But I also read another story that said that no, Peter Medak took him to see it, mm-hmm. and he was so into it that he bought the rights for peter medic to direct other stories say peter medic had to convince him right um by taking him i mean the, the legendary story is that they they were walking back from the theater and they went on a pub crawl um and i have a quote here from peter medic he said you know we'd stop at every pub between soho and Hampstead. i don't know what that means if you live in london please write in mm-hmm. um and it didn't matter if it was after closing hour because he would knock on the door and just say peter's here and every door would open for him wow. peter o'toole was a massive drinker if if dear listener you didn't know that yeah um, was i mean he's no longer with us um and as much as like these stories are kind of a delight i mean apparently the crew and cast would drink with him in his dressing room i don't you know i wonder how much of this translated to the screen you know what, yeah how what, how what what his sobriety level was don't know this. don't know that's fan- that's that's it's a detail i mean again i don't want to make light of it i mean we talked about that in our company episode with right. Lonnie stretch you know it's like it's a detail it clearly had an influence on their performance. Yes. But mm, I, I, I hesitate. I think it's easy to make jokes, you know, about this stuff. And, you know. Oh, absolutely. I no, I get it. I get it. You know, but Peter Tull did drink. And apparently, you know, whatever night he was convinced to do this, he called his manager and said, yes, I'm drunk, but I really want to make this film. Get it going in 24 hours. And the next day, United Artists called Peter Medak and to direct. Mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm. 
And we talked about Peter Medak on a previous episode, uh, episode 17, about changeling. The changeling. Mm-hmm. Excuse me. Mm-hmm. The. I need that. The. Yes, the changeling. It's not not cleaner. Um, and so if you want to get like a, a sense of his biography, you can go back to that episode. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not going to redo it. But I do okay. have. But I have. Why a, don't you just listen <laughs> to our other episodes, you yeah, guys? Uh, if you really want to know. Or you can just, you know, Google it, whatever. Um, he did yeah. this film for free because. Wild. Uh, Peter O'Toole, sorry, not Peter Medak. Um, Peter O'Toole did it for free because the United Artists was already putting out, they just paid him a shit ton of money to make Band of La Mancha. Mm-hmm. So he's like, I don't need money. The budget was $1.4 million, which is quite a bit for, yeah. you know. Yeah. That's a lot of bones. Yeah. And I mean, it was filmed at Harlexton Manor, which is a Victorian country house in Lincolnshire. I had to look <laughs> that up to make sure I said it right. But the interiors were all reconstructed on sound stages. I think it was at like Twickenham Studios or something. I didn't mm. look that up. One detail I thought was interesting, though, is um, apparently in 1974, it was screened on the BBC, like it was shown on TV about two years after it had been in theaters, which was violating this sort of gentleman's agreement about like, mm. you need to leave time for theatrical release to like have its moment before yeah. you like put it on TV. Interesting. Um, yeah, it's kind of interesting because we we had the same thing happen during the pandemic. You know, it was like right. there, was, there was this agreement that like you don't um, everything has to have like forty five days or something right like before that you put it on before on you're allowed to put it anywhere else. And Universal basically like completely just like no, yeah. we're gonna put Trolls World Tour out because people want a movie. And but now we're in this weird period right now where things are being released and streaming and they're being released. They're in also theaters. only theatrical. Some yeah. Things, and there's some is... things that are only streaming. And like, yeah, just that like, is also interesting to me. Yeah. And there's like lots of stuff every year that gets nominated that like, right. I had no chance of seeing, but there's some stuff that I'm like, I'm seeing this advertised everywhere, but I'm not going to pay for this other subscription. Right. And like, I don't know. I could go on and on about this, but theatrical experiences are great. Yes. I, it makes me sad a little bit that like some people it does matter to some directors some directors are like no 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 i won't work with your company if you're not going to do it this way but there's something just kind of depressing about it's it's like direct to video used to be such a mm-hmm. a bad thing mm-hmm. and now it's kind of like yeah it's what well it's, it's what like, we want yeah it's a lot it's a lot of really what we actually want especially since the movies mm-hmm. and when the movies can be a really magical thing but there's also a lot of bullshit around there is them a lot too. of bullshit. a very specific right. kind of movie movie going experience that i want and when that doesn't happen it's pretty awful it can it, like when it like I, I mean i don't mind a few disturbances but when it like really doesn't happen <laughs> it's yeah. a sh- fucking shit show it fucking sucks to be in a theater with drunk people who won't stop yeah. talking it yeah. absolutely oh, sucks to be sitting through a movie with somebody's feet on your seat or so like like someone kicking that back is some yeah, fucking worst. airline bullshit the sound there's a weird pet annoying pet peeve and this is probably something other people probably romanticize mm-hmm. about the movie going experience but just in between previews there's always that really low like that very quick lull of silence yeah and you hear people biting and chewing their food because like, oh, yeah. everybody's just getting into their snacks so that, and there's a lot of plastic yeah. being rus- yeah. i don't know i guess i do kind of like that sound <laughs> because it, at least it's not like talking like, i get you i think talking's worse than candy rustling i'm fussy only one time in my life have i ever like turned around to kind of tell someone i didn't even speak to tell them to shut up i just like you just gave them the classic victoria i, I motioned like the cut it yeah that, that, that you're, you're doing the thing where it looks like you're slicing your own head off yes yes because that's like the theater signal for cut cut you know like cut yeah, the lights cut. cut whatever just like cut. so i didn't even have to say anything but it was like we, we i went to go see it was full metal jacket you know <laughs> which i know like okay right it's not new no, but, but still. it's a movie that's not shown every fucking day. Well, yeah, no, you're going to a special screening exactly. if you're paying to see something like Full Metal Jacket. Like, yeah, so shut she, the fuck and up. Like the other thing was the theater was almost completely empty. Yeah, she was clearly there on a date with her boyfriend. And I'm not trying to make assumptions, but I got the feeling he was more into the movie than she was. And clearly I was more into it than everyone because yeah. I was like infuriated. But it was like they sat down in the row right behind us. Oh you have an entire God. fucking theater. It's so fucking annoying. I mean, like I, nowadays I have no I have no qualms about immediately standing up. Walking oh, yeah, I would totally else. move. Like, no, nope, I would totally move I if, if there was not that you. many people. There yeah. was hardly anyone. So it's like not only did you do this weird thing where like, why would you want to get we're not. 
we're not atoms we don't have to join together yeah like, that's can, so fucking frustrating like, oh my god and like so then they did that and then you're talking and i'm just like i these are these are stupid people. It was Chicago, That's the, but the, but also <laughs> I wish you, no. I like the way you throw that. I've met stupid. I've, I've barely They're left everywhere. LA, but okay. there's a lot of stupid there's people here people too, everywhere. For sure. But um, also definitely sh- like made me mad. Fucking it's frustrating. The only time I've ever done it. And then she, I think, called me a bitch. Um, oh my god. Yeah. Well, it sounds like she's like a fucking bitch. I mean, I feel like I think the dude. I think secretly was probably like, I'm glad someone told her to shut up. Yeah. Like, I'm like, I'm doing you a favor, buddy. Like you should yeah. have told her to shut up. I don't know why you're not telling her to shut up. Yeah. It's a fucking movie. Yeah. Like, I'm sorry. I'm, mm. No, I'm not sorry. I wasn't sorry. Were you with somebody? I was with my boyfriend at the time. Oh, okay. I think he was a little like, I can't believe you did that. But I'm like, fuck you, dude. Mm. Like, oh I'm, my God. I'm like, I, I care about cinema. If I was like with my partner and like they got. He didn't not support called. me, but I think he, after the fact, just thought like, well, that was kind of rude. I'm like, yeah. they were rude. Like, what, were, what was rude about what you did? It's exactly. Crazy. I didn't even say anything. Yeah, I just fuck turned that, around. Fuck Logan, like, this guy fucking no. sucks too. Yeah, no, that's This is a, t- a tale about clowns. This is a fucking clown shit it's a clown show clown Some show clown show right if, if everybody's pulling clown shit all around like you victoria you're just trying to watch full metal jacket i just wanted to watch full metal jacket in peace yeah and this see this is part of what makes the movie going experience frustrating yep Yep. which is part of why there's yeah. definitely some this is why i do go to the new bev a lot because yeah they have very strict rules and people Good. there like fucking movies Good. so it's like you don't talk you put your phones away as soon as the trailers come on. No phones out. Like, that's yeah. it. Like, it ruins it for everyone. And everyone there kind of agrees, but also the management will fucking kick you out. Yeah. They don't care. They will do it. And I'm like, No, I appreciate yes. that. Like, everybody does. Everybody yeah. there is, like, there to be at the the church that we've <laughs> Our own church that's called Cinema. Well, you're paying what you're paying to, that too. to go to this theater. Like, this ain't Sunday yeah, service. Shut the fuck up, <laughs> dude. Like, yeah. You think you're smarter than this? Anyway, real. we've really drifted. Um, <laughs> I have a few reviews here. Yes. They describe this movie. They said, it's like if Yorgos Lathamos got his hands on an Ernest Lupich script and amped up the absurdity. Um, Ebert was not a huge fan. He saw the original. Well, he saw the American cut mm-hmm. when it first came out in 1972. And then in, in 1983, the sort of like full cut got released and mm-hmm. he went to go see it and reviewed it. His review, he said it actually lost half a star because mm. of the length and yeah. it's just like I didn't see what was better by yeah. including that material. Um he was just not a fan in general though. He said um the movie takes this beginning and by the beginning I mean the, the sort of premise and creates a black comedy about British eccentricity. But then in the last 70 or 80 minutes and it's worth mentioning last 70 or 80 minutes. Yes, absolutely. Um it seems to lose its way. We get no real feeling that it knows where it's going and every good comedy needs a certain headlong conviction. I don't totally agree with that last part. I yeah, I'm torn on that because on one hand I can understand it like that that physical feeling you get at that point in the movie when you're like, oh, there's this much movie still left. Yeah. Um and it does almost seem like when he does pivot from being Jesus to To Jack is it's a very different comes a different movie. It feels it feels like it's going a very different direction all of a sudden. I would say if anything, I had an attachment to him as Jesus yeah. that I didn't realize I was going to miss mm. as it was, ta- as it, you know, and when then he- there was a point at which where it did feel like the movie should have been sundowning sooner because of that. Yeah. Th- he was no longer Jesus, which was such a driving point of the, what, what felt like such a driving point of the story. Yeah, I agree completely. But everything that does happen afterwards, though, is valid and it's yeah. kind of, but there's a lot you know certainly the carnage doesn't happen until that point at least yeah. yes yeah but no i agree it does feel like sort of two different movies sandwiched together but i and not to but like, it is all the same movie right it is and i don't i don't mean to like say that as if somehow like they didn't know what they were doing or didn't think i mean the peter barnes the player i mean he was uh, a friend of peter medex there's so many peters involved in this there's peter barnes the screenwriter there's peter o'toole the star <laughs> and peter medex the director so everybody's called peter um like i think part of the satire is kind of the oh it's still going yes and we need to kind of watch him transform from kind of just crazy crazy to no you're gonna establish like the rules and political um agenda for an entire culture now 
once we got to the House of Lords, I was like, oh, they're all crazy. That's the only way to explain this. It's yeah. the only way to explain the behavior of our leaders. They're just fucking crazy. Yes. Surprise. I, yeah, <laughs> I know. <laughs> and I mean, I think you probably have to be to want to do it and then to stay in it. I, it just, But it, it really left me with a kind of, oh, no one's at the wheel. Yeah. You know? Yeah, like, truly. <laughs> shit. <laughs> or, well, I mean, yeah, the people who are at the wheel are fucking crazy. Or they're murderers. Yeah, they're yeah. just like the, the whole, that passionate, like, Ugh. we need to be, we need to be stricter. Oh, yeah. No, that whole Love big comes speech from he gives. Fear. And like the punishment being important. And they all applaud it. Yeah. Like, of course they do. Of course. And, and like yeah. for him to just be crazy and it's like, and everyone else projects their own ideas on it. And what yeah. they need, uh, it's like so perfect, but also, I don't know. I have one more review, which just says, The ruling class is that rarity, a successful satiric film. No other genre is so plagued by good intentions and regrettable results. Yeah. <laughs> I do want to mention a couple things about, I know I said, go listen to the other episode if you want to know about Peter Medak. But mm -hmm. I did learn a few new things about him. He made Negatives in 1968, and then he made A Day in the Death of Joe Egg, and then he followed it up with Ruling Class. And mm -hmm. this set of three films were his first three films. And, you know, Medak rose up as a technician and an assistant, and he really climbed his way up through the British Picture Corporation. But then, you know, eventually he comes over to America. He starts uh, working at MCA Universal, and he worked on Marnie, the uh, Alfred Hitchcock film. He was like mm. an assistant director on that. He's directed a lot of TV uh, shows like Homicide, Breaking Bad, The Wire, Carnival, Cold Case, House. The interesting thing I learned, though, was that when he was at Universal um, and he was an assistant director and he was very hungry and wanting to do something, they're like, all right, just give him a camera crew. And, and he went around and shot a documentary about Universal Studios, like mm -hmm. being on the lot. And then he showed it, you know, to the staff. And he claims that people were so into it that it led to the Universal Studio tour. That, like, mm. this is what we should be doing. We should be showing people how the movies are made. That's pretty cool. I don't know if that's true. I mean, he's claiming it. You know, it's kind of like when Paul McCartney's like, yeah. yeah, we invented feedback. You know, it's like, yeah. okay, dude. Uh, yeah, right. no, yeah, totally. But I just thought that was fascinating. Um, and I guess he, when he was assistant director, he was fortunate enough also to work with Michael Caine, who was a huge advocate for Peter Medak, like, really helped get him work and, and get him moving up. Awesome. Um, yeah, I, I mean, it's just a lot when you got people vouching for you on that level. He's had multiple. It's what you need. Clearly, multiple talented actors have mm. like rallied for this guy because yeah. this guy knows Peter, how to. He right. knows how to make them look good. Yeah, he no. knows how to capture a good performance. Yeah, we mentioned this last time, even though we weren't talking about the ruling class. But yeah, Peter O'Toole has said like this is this is the only guy he wants to work with anymore. And yeah. like, right when you see this movie, it's pretty clear why. It's great. <laughs> it's like this is wild shit. Um, and you know, this is again, this is one of those. It's a very successful adaptation. Yeah. I, I wouldn't have assumed this was a play at all. It feels completely cinematic. And uh, I was listening to an interview with Peter Medak earlier today, and he was saying something about how, like, the, the trick to the adaptation is, like, you have to go inside it. Right. Like, to make it cinematic. And, like, it sounds very simple, but it, it is, like, it's the, the becoming the camera, being the camera, you know. Yeah. Know, there's something cool there. He's still alive. Uh, he's in his 80s. He is a very sleepy interview, though. Like, yeah. I, I was like, how? It's oh, only been seven sleepy. minutes. Like, yeah. you know. Anyway, um, but very talented guy. He's done a lot of interesting work. I mean, this kind of feels like the most significant thing. It's, it's a huge cult classic. You know, it, it's one of those movies that's described simultaneously as forgotten, yeah. but also like very much discussed. Yes. So I don't know quite where we land on that one. Which is so interesting because, yeah, this is one of those movies that I feel like I've heard about a lot and then at the same time never because well like it caught my eye when i was looking through his, his wikipedia initially last time yeah, i was yeah. like looking at its stats and just was like has this ever been on my radar was yeah. this ever on a, a, like a maybe on some like youtube top 10 list or yeah. something like i bet it probably was on one of those like ign lists or something yeah. or this feels vaguely familiar yeah. but i've never i think in my head i had was the chance i was conflating this with um kind hearts and coronets which is hmm. alec guinness playing like 12 different parts including like two women okay that sounds cool it's a really great movie <laughs> too bad you've already seen I it know. we're never gonna well, talk you, about it mm. now do you have any lingering questions? I mean, do, are we, about the ruling class. Yeah. Well, there's just there were there were a lot of things I really enjoyed about it that that anyway I I, I want to say you know I I recommend it I highly recommend it you should mm -hmm. totally watch this definitely but I was definitely. going on about the time things yeah other than that there was 
so much else that I really liked. I'm a sucker for those big, grandiose performance yeah. the monologues and physical. Oh, and this is you know, there's it's nothing so but that. that. I love the absurdity of the musical numbers. I thought the the lady who played Grace was actually probably oh, my favorite supporting I liked character. Her. That, that was probably my favorite secondary character. Okay. Uh, mine was Tucker. Yours was great. Yeah, cool. that was the, my answer to well, that. Is is her, and I feel like she. Well, we got a really interesting character sketch. She of her. was really. F- I really liked that monologue. That exactly. was like it when ca- she was undressing. It caught me off guard. And there's a lot of this movie where you do get kind of like, oh, I'm watching a movie. Oh, this is in- like it pulls you out of it, but it works. Like it, like yeah. you. you you're you, you're taken aback in the right way. I think it's like it's good that it the camera at times calls attention to itself. The movie is trying to make you question like movie making right like yes there is some endurance issues here (laughs) but Mm -hmm. but it's such it's such a movie that like reminds you oh movies can be anything right they can be anything (laughs) and this is absolutely wild and unique and like i've never seen anything like it I t- you know i love the way that you said that too like it really is a movie that that is like yeah a movie can be anything you don't have to follow like, this movie breaks a ton of rules oh my god <laughs> this movie's like the camera work is so silly and cartoony the zooms ins and outs yeah. and adjustments sometimes and then there's there's a lot of um but there's also some very cinematic cinematic shots there and are. when it gets very grounded in those moments with with peter yeah. and it can be when really he's on the sad. cross it can be oh, yeah. oh you know what i loved was when he was doing that kind of intense he's on his cross mm-hmm. and he's like bless this bless that and he's like it's my wedding day <laughs> like just leaps peter o'toole I, I forgot to share this he described this as a comedy with tragic relief mm-hmm. and i just like that inversion even if it's not exactly true yeah, um, no, but I do but it does like that. feel that way because those moments when he's like being confronted with himself, he yeah. shows an incredible amount of humanity. Mm-hmm. Like I do, he's wild and he's crazy at times, but I also, I still cared about him. Mm-hmm. I'm still worried about his welfare. I didn't like seeing these people manipulate him. And, and yes, they are tremendously privileged and so they can live this way. But the idea of people scheming around you and, and, taking control of your life absolutely is very scary and i i just he had a lot of moments where there was like a real childlike kind of fear or you know he like collapses he literally like becomes small yeah, when pressure he's the one cooker people, yeah the pressure, pressure cooker, cooker. <laughs> <laughs> the pressure cooker oh my god yes yeah. those glasses oh my god all right well would you watch this again I think I would actually. Yeah, I would too. I think I would. I was Maybe I was going to say no on the way here. I was thinking, <laughs> thinking about I was question. thinking about this question. Like I was like, is this something I would rewatch? You know what? There are things I want to go back and like watch again and to try to pick up on yeah. little bits, you know? I, but, I would, yeah, some yeah. of the dialogue was, and there honestly are just like parts that like, even I'm watching this with captions because I watch everything with captions. Same. And there's like a lot of inaudible yeah. Rackets. Yeah, yeah. And they're like, I have an idea. Screaming what they're intensifies. <laughs> yeah, like I had kind of guess it's just oh what's that so you know like, yeah. it, it kind of sounds like that sometimes. It's yeah. hard to No, I mean it, I don't know. Uh, God bless whoever did the closed captioning on this though, because it, it would be tough to follow his some of those rants and but I re- I'm really glad like oh, I, no, I, it, I appreciated it more I to too. be able to read it too. Yeah, um and I mean for anyone who doesn't I'm just a pro captions. No, no, I, gal. I'm all for captions because the relationship between the phrasing and the image, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, there's literally a moment where Tucker points out, he says, all of the wealth is held in 1%. Mm-hmm. Like he makes like the 1% reference. Like, it's just like, yeah. what the fuck? What? Like, you know, and this is like the magic of old movies and why like my old Twitter is just screen grabbing these things. Because right. I love when you find this, what you think was pretty fresh and contemporary and you're like, oh, Black people in the 40s are still cooler than me today. Yeah. Like, you know, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, oh, okay, got it. Just a good reality check. I would also watch this again. <laughs> <laughs> got back there. I got back That's there. Great. Um, That's great. Yeah. Thank you to all our listeners. Yeah, dude. You're Thanks. the best. You guys rock. Keep you, on yeah. keeping on. And Thank if you, you can find it time in your day or love in your heart, we really appreciate reviews. Yeah, I know you hear us say it, but it's really fucking true. We need them. Like, yeah, please, 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 please review it. Please. <laughs> no, it make it really. It helps us rank. It helps people who don't know us see us, find us. 
and then we'll get better because we'll feel encouraged to do better. Yeah. So then we'll have like our episodes are just the content's going to keep getting better because we'll, now we'll don't, feel don't promise we'll feel no like <laughs> i we need the positive re- we need to be given the treats we do need treats to give us to yeah. to to get us to the next level yeah have you thought about donating your car to a breath of fresh movie <laughs> yeah and know that you're giving to a good cause mm-hmm. 